parts, so I just filled up with gas. Got a whole bunch of stuff out of the way this morning. It's almost 2.30 now. I'm uh, going to do a Chevy Silverado pickup. Uh, kind of hard to understand the guy. I guess he either lost the key or something's going on with the key. I just, uh, I don't speak Spanish, so uh, I didn't really understand him too well. But we'll see what's going on with that and we will take care of it. Then we are running to Woodburn to install a combination lock. Then we have to go adjust a door closer in Fallsburg. I guess the door isn't closing completely. I'm sure the heat's off in there and the fluid in the door closer is a little thick and now it won't let it close as fast as it normally does. The door is getting left open because it's not latching. Uh, then we're shooting back to uh, this big job that we've been working on trying to get finished up. I mean, it's just, we got two big jobs working in the process, right? Well, not big, but decent sized jobs. You know, uh, door closers, hardware, uh, kick plates, pull plate, push and pull plates, um, uh, a whole bunch of levers downstairs in a classroom, couple L1000s. That's just on this one job that we're going to finish up here today, hopefully, if we can actually get to it. And, uh, I'll be back with you when we pull in on this pickup truck. All right, so we just pulled in on this 06 Chevy. We gotta make a key for this thing. I am gonna call it a cove because it's about 11 degrees out right now. All right, so this is a lot more than just making a key for this truck. No matter how many questions you ask, it's never seems to be correct. But they pulled the whole ignition switch off of this truck because the key wouldn't turn. I jiggled it, it turned. So now I'm just gonna turn it all the way and I'm gonna push this pin in here and pull this out and I'm gonna cut this key back to factory because it's not turning for him easy. All right, so I pulled this ignition out and the code is the top one right there, G3271. I'm gonna cut a new key for this. All right, so what I have to do since there's that whole ignition is literally out of the truck, I'm gonna recut this key on a shell by code get this ignition working perfect in there and then he can worry about putting everything else in that way he doesn't have to reprogram everything all right so we're going to choose vehicles chevy silverado this is a g series code it's right there and it was g let me look at that again. Looking through the phone here, so bear with me. 3271. 3271. Next. Next. Tell us use zero. So let's chuck this up roughly to use zero. down hit cut we'll let it do its thing all right so this is the old key when you put that in you can see that that sidebar sticks out see when you put this key in that retracts this sidebar but being that that thing is sticking out like that you can actually push it down flush I cut the new key that would be this one and when you put this in, it draws that sidebar all the way back flush. And now it's correct because they were had, well, he obviously couldn't get it to turn because they had to jiggle the hell out of the key to get it. But now it's perfect. So that's the, that's the new key. And that's the old key. See that little, where it sits up on the sidebar? So now I'm going to cut the head out of the chip of this key and put it into here and just insert it and he'll be good to go you can put everything back together all right so this is what i did i cut the head of this old key off and i took this chip out of the head of the key now i just insert this into this piece of plastic like so and this goes right down inside of here and this key 
is now good to go. I'll pop this back together and we're moving on. All right, and here's the ignition all back together. Perfectly smooth now. And his original chip out of that key. No catch whatsoever in it. All right, so that Chevy pickup was a lot more than I, I thought it was going to be. I figured it was just a lost key or something. I was actually going to pull a code on that thing just because it's so cold outside. But we didn't have to do that. Uh, pulled the lock apart, made a made a fresh key back to code, and just uh, reshelled it. And they could put it back in. I'm not sitting outside this weather for you know, hours putting an ignition back in. But anyway, we are on our way to Woodburn, and we're going to reinstall a combination lock in a house for a guy. Or install an old combination lock in a house for a guy. He gave me the lock. I just got to run over and put it in. So we just pull into this house here on our right. Of course, it's not plowed or shoveled or anything. But we're going to go put this combination lock in there. All right. This is what we're putting in for the guy. This is one of the old Unicans. This is before Cabo and stuff like that. I do have to get him a combination for it. Um, we cannot replace the deadbolt hole out. Because if we do, it's going to bang right into that handle if you see where everything lines up. Actually, let me show you from the outside. So this door, if you look where that inside handle goes, that's going to, that's really hard to get a picture of. It ends up right at the deadbolt, and there's not even an inch there, and it'll bang right into the combination lock, and it'll actually hold the screen door out like that and won't allow it to close so what we're gonna do I already called them and spoke to them we're just gonna put the combination lock up here higher on the door and with this old unican if you look 613 of 02 this is an older much older locks 20 years old all right so I have this chamber out of the lock we have to figure out what the old combination was so what we need this to do is line up exactly like that so this black piece will drop in there and we're just gonna roll these a little bit to see which one comes around the furthest so five is deeper than the four just check the one okay so the one is gonna be the first one and then it looks like five and then four and if you look at that, all of these now line up with one another, so this should push in. And now we can change this and stick everything back together and put it on the door. Okay, so this is all installed in here now. This door closes, deadbolt smooth. And the combination lock is smooth and we are moving on to the next job all right so we took care of that house here in woodburn and now we are headed to fallsburg we have to adjust the door closer all right so here we are at the next job this is a panic bar just took the cover off and as you can see if you watch this right here And this thing is locked it's just rotating everything inside but all right we're gonna take this off and we're gonna have to put some screws in this all right so if we look at this you can see that this screw is half out so I'm gonna put this is uh, what the builders put on here um, I'm gonna hit this with some blue thread lock not red and I'm also gonna put a couple of screws top and bottom because this whole thing is literally just dancing in here to fix it all right so what I did here I put some blue thread lock on these two just to hold them and then I put let me try to get you a better view I put some screws in here and I countersunk them in without so they won't pull through but there is wood behind this and this is nice and super rigid now now we can put the bar back on and see what we got just want to show you what the builders did here if you look at this they cut the lockout pin off because when this door closes 
this drops behind this and the lockout pin would get caught behind there. But it is holding and I called them and they don't want anything fixed. They don't want anything through bolted. They just want it so it locks. Okay, and like I showed you before, the, uh, the contractors cut the lockout pin off it. But at least when this door closes now, it's solid. They can't just yank it open. All right, so we took care of that panic bar on the uh, front of that shul there. They, uh, they don't want to spend any extra money on that thing. They just wanted it so the handle wouldn't spin and unlock. Gave them a bill, they paid the bill, simple as that. Uh, we are moving back to this job that I've been trying to get done all week here. Uh, actually, we got two jobs working that I've been trying to get done here this week, but I'm gonna go finish up this other one right now. All right, so we just pulled in on this shoe. I've been trying to finish this thing here all week. It's already Thursday, but I keep getting called away for all these small little things. Uh, and I got another one that I'm working on too. Uh, I will show you exactly what we got going on inside of here. We just got to finish up uh, Master King a few more locks and this one is done. So hopefully we can be done here by five o'clock. All right, so this is what we're doing in this building closer. Uh, this panic hardware was put on by the builder. This is must be the same builder because they did exactly the same thing here. Got a push and pull closer. This closet, uh, we're actually keying the single deadbolt for it now. That was on here, the uh, the passage knob. And let me show you the other side of the building. All right, so this is the other side of the building. This has closers on here. Um, I put uh, uh, pull plates on this. I had to use self-piercing screws because these were uh, these are pretty rugged doors. And when I put the handles on, as usual, I threw bolt. I drill holes in the inside and actually put the bolts through it rather than using the door. It screws everything up. Works better that way. They're actually working in here right now, tiling and stuff, but we put that on there. This panic bar was on there. We put a closer there. And this kitchen, the passage knobs are what they are. I just uh, put the deadbolts in and we're master keying them now. This is upstairs and we did the whole downstairs. I'll show you that now. All right, and with my doors, I slow my closers down to almost nothing. I mean, they have a breezeway in here anyway, but when these doors close because everybody's in here praying, you'll hear that it closes nice and quiet. There's a lot of guys when they put these things on, it's bang and the door flies halfway back open. I, I, I can't stand installing things incorrectly like that. It's just nice and quiet, leaves everybody to themselves. And they're probably gonna want me to put kick plates on these doors because they are getting scuffed up. We'll play it by ear. We'll see what they wanna do, I'll ask them. All right, so I already shut the electric off. I forgot to do this. Uh, this is a L1000 with passage mode, classroom. This has a buzzer system on it. Uh, this is a storeroom for storage. Uh, this is a bathroom with a push and pull with a closer. Um, I'm waiting for a electronic strike for this. This does have the knob up high and a closer on it already. Classroom. Gonna get a little dark. Classroom. Classroom. Another classroom right here, classroom right here. This is a classroom. This is a storage closet. This is another classroom, classroom, storage closet with a combination lock on it. This is a, a closer and another bathroom. It's got a squeaky hinge. And this is another utility closet, classroom, and another L1000 over here. And that completes this building, just waiting for the electronic strike. All right, so I just dropped the keys off to the caretaker, the master keys for there. Uh, that's finally done. The only thing that's left is just the electronic strike, but that's for somebody else getting billed to someone else. Anyway, this is all finished up. It is 5.02 and I am headed home. I appreciate you guys watching and if you like it, leave a thumbs up.